Alex and Nadav from Opal Ocean. Welcome back to Australian Musician. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you, man. It's been a, been a little while since we last spoke. Yeah, last time we spoke uh, was during the pandemic lockdowns. When you look back at that period, um, what comes to mind? Uh, long days. <laughs> uh, we, I guess we were writing uh, our latest album uh, mm. during, during the lockdowns, you know. I, th I think what reminds me, what comes to mind the most is that the extra uh, little bit of time we actually had uh, because of the lockdowns, you know, to actually be able to put some time towards the writing and towards finishing that album. Uh, so yeah. you know, it was for us. <laughs> yeah, look, there's definitely the extra time, I think. And also gave other people extra time, like uh, obviously Jordan um, Rudess from Dream Theater, who, who we spoke about last time. He he initially was just meant to do one solo on the on one of the tracks, and he ended up playing over the whole thing because he had time during that lockdown. Um, and you know we learned new skills. I learned you know photos and video skills, and translated that into filming uh, with my partner some of the latest music videos, um, which is really cool to experiment and try a hand at something else and. Alex also tried hands at different things. He's got learned so many different skills now. He's built a home studio, which he's sitting in, uh, one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a really, actually, a really awesome project, this place, because we, um, this is where we uh, recorded our latest uh, fish food EP, um, which was uh, really cool. You know, it was a bit of a challenge seeing it. Hey, actually, can we do it on our own? And um uh, been at home, you know, got a couple of mics and and records, and so I'm uh I'm very pleased with what came out. So that that was a good thing actually. A lot of positive things came out of the lockdowns. Yeah. Um, I um I remember at the time you'd cancelled uh trips to India and the Maldives. Did you uh, get around to getting to those places? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't Every, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> the Maldives. Oh, uh, no, look, I uh, still, still hopes. Um, uh, the Maldives sounds really nice. Uh, mm. every kind of tour, we, we're like, oh man, I, I wish we, uh, <laughs> we can make stuff. You know, we can this time. you know, what's funny though, because I think we spoke before we went over to Abu Dhabi, we ended up doing the Formula One. Um, during just like in between kind of lockdowns just before omicron came out they relaxed the laws on overseas travel and uh we got asked to play at the formula one finale in abu dhabi and that was a really cool and kind of interesting experience kind of stressful because we were still unsure if we'd be stuck over in the middle east kind of thing <laughs> yeah you, you did manage to get back to europe i think last year um Tell me about the kind of audience you're developing over there and the, the kind of venues you are playing. Yeah, sure. Um, we're lucky enough to to be one of those bands that are super easy to travel. Uh, so, you know, we pack all our stuff in one suitcase and we can rent a car and just kind of go anywhere, uh, you know, no need for a truck or anything. So we've been uh, being able to actually squeeze in a lot of different types of gigs, you know, from like the small cafe uh type scenario to you know like uh main stage festival kind of gigs uh so it's been really cool we, we've traveled around um seen a lot of places a lot of fronts uh for some reason i, I feel like we get a, a lot of french uh, crowds uh which is really cool um and uh yeah i mean Nadav, what, what else you got to say about europe well, yeah, look, I mean, Europe audience definitely understand what we do. Um, we had some amazing shows um, this previous tour. I think France, again, was just a big one. We played some nice festivals uh, on the coast as well as uh, we did a, another show in Paris at a really beautiful venue. Um, in terms of our own concerts right now, I think we're feeling still the wave of COVID, just like a lot of touring musicians that we've spoken to this previous tour, is that everyone's now getting back on board coming to Europe, but there's so much competition out there. You know, we played Paris the same night as, you know, a thousand other musicians as well as big artists. 
Um, so we saw a drop in sales than previous years. Um, so I think this next tour, we're going to focus more on festivals, building that audience back up, and then coming back to our own Opal Ocean uh, tours. Or maybe we'll do a winter tour. We are still deciding the future of everything right now. <laughs> Um, one of the things that uh, we know you're doing is the Melbourne Guitar Show in March. Um, what are your memories of the last guitar show you played at? Oh man, it's such it's such a cool event. I remember having a blast, then seeing all those guitar nerds and you know all those really awesome booths. Um, you know about just about guitar and little little things. You know, I remember picking up um some little stomp. Uh, pads you know like to make your board a bit mm. bigger i remember you know th things like this that you would only find and learn about in uh, specific shows like this you know and so it's really cool because we get to play guitar to just a, a guitar fan base you know to a guitar yeah. kind of crowd so that's really really awesome um uh, i yeah I, I think nerding out with all the other guitarists is one of the best bits but you know it's going to be an interesting thing for us because last time we went we were you know we were going for yamaha as well you know we were sponsored artists um and while we still alex still retains the sponsorship um because i've moved to france i don't but we've also at the same time moved over to godin guitars so we've completely changed in the last year two years now I can't even remember how long, maybe a year and a half, two years, we've completely changed our live guitar rig um, and we're still changing. We're going to, going through a phase of probably replacing uh, some of the pedal boards and doing some sneaky things like that for the next tour. Yeah. So the, the multi-ac models, the guitars? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're using yeah. uh, the, the latest Grand Concert uh, Deluxe guitars. Um and they're they they're beautiful to play. Still missing a little bit of body for us coming from you know a full size or even you know a thin body guitar. When you go to that whole electric hollow body style, it's uh it's still not quite there for the rhythms. But the lead is just incredible on these guitars. Yeah, yeah. I, I was watching your um rig rundown video. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Which which I'll link. <laughs> I'll link to that with with this. Um, it seemed like quite a complex system. Um, it's uh, the Line 6 system. How did you come across that? Well, uh, Yamaha hooked us up, basically, because they own Line 6 as well. So they, um, they kind of offered us a deal on the whole Helix uh, thing. And, uh, that seemed really appealing because I was logging around one of these behemoth <laughs> uh, pedal boards, you know, and uh, one of the things uh, I, I used to uh, do is before every gig, you know, you have to put all your knobs and all remember all your settings, uh, you know, before the show. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, you have, had to have something very particular before every show. And uh, yeah, and it kind of turned us on to the digital stuff. And so we tried that out and that was really cool because uh, you can do obviously a million and one things and yeah you had an axe effects at one point that's i mean that's a whole other story i was trying that out and then you know nadav went with the helix and then or you got that on loan or something i, I can't remember the story <laughs> um but yeah look the, the helix has been a, a beast you know it's been uh doing really good by us i think uh I, 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 you know, there's still quite plenty of life into it, um, but it is maybe we're looking at changing it up, maybe for something. We are, we are lighter. We're basically change like we're changing now to something lighter for our upcoming Euro European tour that is still in the works. But we're probably uh, going with. Um, do I say Alex or is it a secret? No, it's probably not a secret. <laughs> a <few> people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, we're going with the neural DSP quad cortex just for the size and power. We we're we're very tight on our even though we're we're very small as a band to travel. Now with the overseas flights being so expensive on luggage, every kilo counts. So if we can minimize our rig to fit on board with us and know our guitars can fold up 
and we can also take the helix on board uh, not the helix the neural dsp that means we're always sorted for gigs no matter what <laughs> yeah yeah no, it's, it's the one thing as well with the godons that's just so amazing you can unbolt you know the, the next bolt on and so you can just unbolt the neck uh and fold it up kind of in the soft case and man you can take your guitar on board you know it looks like a backpack and uh, wow i mean the the world of difference that actually makes being sure to be able to you know go on a flight and your guitar is always going to be safe that's just uh, one of those things that make Godin like such a, a great change compared to the go to, to the to the yamaha huge cases we had um yeah it's definitely been a really awesome upgrade for the last tour yeah well what about when you're writing do you find that you need your effects around or do you generally write acoustically yeah look uh it's for sure for sure the the sounds are important you know especially when things it comes like you know if, when you're trying to write a song that's a bit more electronic kind of bass uh, like the wah and the delays and stuff like that that's where you get a lot of inspiration from but um we strive to have a song that doesn't rely so much you know on the mm. effects so when we write riffs and everything we make sure that they would still make sense if we were to play them dry um, yeah yeah i think i think that's kind of like the philosophy we're trying to um uh, you know to go with yeah and it's also just easier to pick up an acoustic guitar and start writing and not have to plug things in however in saying that we recently got guitars given to us by a company called enya um, the carbon fiber steel string guitars and they come with uh on on board effects where you know you can obviously have reverb and delay and everything kind of like a tone would um and so these kind of things even though it's a small ambience or whatever a small effect are still very inspiring and i think you know effects do give a different mood and allow you to go in a different direction um so Overall, I mean, we we try do it acoustically, but it's always nice to have effects when they're there. <laughs> uh, talking about songwriting, but uh, your last few offerings have been uh, covers: uh, "System of a Down's Chop Suey," uh, Pink Floyd's "Time," uh, Seven Nation Army. How do you go about selecting uh, songs, uh, cover songs to record? Yeah, um, I think we made a big list of all the songs we uh, we'd like to eventually cover, and those ones seem to be maybe the ones that I don't know that that kind of felt right to for a cover, you know. And in my mind, this this EP is also kind of probing the waters in terms of what we can do. What I know, we we. Like things like you know the um, the infected mushrooms cover, which is super electronic compared to our, our normal style. You know, I I wanted to hey actually just give to the fans a sound that they maybe have haven't heard from us, but without really labeling it. This is pure operation music, you know, in a way, um, and also uh, pairing it with you know classic covers like you know the White Stripes seven nation army and then chop soy you know which is such a rock anthem and and uh you know music that really inspired us and made us you know so mm. i don't know i think i think a lot of it is look we we didn't really have the time and the facility like you know it, it was a bit difficult for us to sit down together and write a whole new ep or whole new album and so we saw the opportunities like, hey, actually, it would be right for us now to do covers. And so we just took it and we're like, okay, let's let's try this cover thing out. We've never really done it. Let's see if we can pull it off. Yeah. And I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way it's turned out. Really, uh, really cool. We kind of explored a bunch of sounds and went steel string on Pink Floyd. Oh, my God. That, is, that ruined my fingers. <laughs> I was like, wow, I haven't played steel string in ages. Um, but that's, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hadel Zone was your last album of originals, 2020. Um, have you written some stuff with a new album in mind? We are in the process currently of 
I mean, we definitely have many, many riffs that we are always constantly writing and putting on our voice memos on the phone. Um, but we have been discussing on kind of a direction that we want to go um, because obviously the Halo Zone was very progressive, very dark. It was something we wanted to explore for a long time. But after playing this last European tour and all of last year and doing the Australian tour as well, we definitely feel we we resonate a lot of the old stuff that we did, like Mexicana and, and Jam and some of these more just easygoing songs are really fun to play live. And we, we kind of want more songs fun to play live because they're fun for us. We get to interact with the crowd more rather than just kind of, okay, got to concentrate, got to do this switch and got to go to here and got to do this and you know, they're not easy flowing songs either for the listener, their experiences, they're progressive, um, which is fine. You know, we've got the progressive audiences which come along to the gigs, but we started to kind of just now talk about, all right, it's time to get a new something together, whether it's an EP, a single album, who knows, but we know the direction that we're kind of going for something lighter, happier, easygoing, and, and just for a good time. Yeah. yeah, and saying that there's just always, you know, a difference between what we aim for and whatever comes out. You know, I guess that's what we're hoping. But we do have a strange tendency every time we do something uh, to kind of overcomplicate and kind of just always find a way to, to make something like, oh, what if we added a little bit of 5-4 here or something like that, you know? But hey, that's... <laughs> We'll yeah. see. We'll see. I can't really predict, but I, I hope. I hope, man. This next recording. I, I think. I think so, man. The riffs I'm writing at the moment are like very simple. No odd time signatures, really. Yes. Straight. Yes. <laughs> so you're playing the Melbourne Guitar Show. Um, what happens for the rest of the year? Oh, okay. that's that's a good question. We are heading obviously back to Europe. Um, so we're doing another summer tour. We're going to go back to some key locations. So we're going to go back to Malta Earth Garden. Um, and then we've got a lot of dates again in France. And we're going to, it's a bit of a strange year. We'll see. We're still in the process of still finalizing the booking. But then we're super excited because we come back and we do some shows up in uh, far north Queensland uh, in September. So we're going to come back to Australia. Um, we've got some shows where headlining, and, um, I don't know if it's announced yet. Maybe we'll hold off on doing the announcement right now because it's not announced yet. So, no, but we are coming back to far North Queensland and doing some shows up there. And then we might tag on a few of our own shows in Brisbane and along the East Coast. So a bit of an interesting year. Maybe we'll go back to uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's happening? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's been great to catch up again. And we look forward to seeing you at the Melbourne Guitar Show. Yeah, you too, mate. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having us.